Now, I know it's going to be incredibly easy for everyone, and it has been for the past week plus, to crap all over the New York Knicks. It's just easy to do. James Dolan, I rest my case. But when you look at the way that this offseason has transpired so far for the Knicks, how free agency went and ultimately did not go for this organization, it's really, really hard not to just crap all over them. Get great kicks out of watching Stephen A. Smith poon him to kingdom fucking come, especially because the Knicks were clearly setting themselves up to be big-time players this offseason. They traded away Kristaps Porzingis, which indicated that they were looking to shift the way they were doing things and opening up space for ultimately two max-level free agents. Two max guys. That's clearly what the plan and the philosophy was. Because if it wasn't, then what the fuck are you doing? Like, I would think at this point we can at least give them that little bit of credit. They were positioning themselves to get two big-time guys, two max-level contract players. And when you look at it, they had over $70 million in cap space. That's exactly what the hell they were going for. And a lot of people thought it was going to be Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving for months and months that they wanted to go to New York and they were going to play together. And ultimately, they were going to choose the New York Knicks and try to really build on their legacy, especially in the case of Kevin Durant. After winning a couple of championships in Golden State, what better place to go than go to New York, go play for the Knicks that have frankly been a woebegone franchise for a long damn time. Thank you, James Dolan, for that. You felt like for a period of time this is probably going to be a foregone conclusion until it didn't happen. Until you find out that Kyrie was kind of the puppet master here, conned Kevin Durant and DeAndre Jordan to wanting to come play with him, and they decided to go to New York, yes, but instead they went to go play for the Brooklyn Nets. And as you can imagine, the basketball media, the basketball fans, basketball social media, everybody is crapping all over the Knicks. To a degree as they should be. You ultimately went in the past year or so with one mission, one vision. Got to a point where you could bring in two max level players and you ended up with nothing. You're in the biggest media market in the country. You've got lots of opportunity for big stars to come in there and really shape and mold their legacy. Be right there in the Neck of everything with fucking Madison Avenue. And they didn't get the job done. It is an indictment of the incompetence and the sheer stupidity in the nincompoop levels of that dumbest of dumb dicks, James Dolan. It absolutely is. And if you're a Knicks fan, you look at it, you think you're going to get Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. And instead, you end up with Julius Randle, Bobby Portis, Taj Gibson, Reggie Bullock, Wayne Ellington, Alfred Payton. <laughs> what are you trying to do here? They freed up all this cap space to not bring in any difference makers, so now they got to sit there and pay a bunch of second and third tier, fourth tier role fucking players, put them on a bunch of two year contracts with team options in the second year outside of Julius Randle. So that way you can win, what, 30 games next year? Now, part of the thing you could crap on the Knicks on is for they clearly were tanking and they still didn't find a way to get the number one overall pick and get Zion Williamson. But hey, that's how the ping pong balls bounce sometimes, you know? Hard to blame them for that. But you did. You clearly positioned yourself to get into a situation where you were going to go after big name players and you struck out? Not a single man, damn one of them. There is no justification. There is no spin. There is no bullshit that you can use as a device to steer us away from the fact that the Knicks completely went into free agency and rolled fucking snake eyes. But even in that case, let's look past that for a second. Let's try to look bigger picture here. Because there still could potentially be a bigger picture. The fact is, there is no guarantee with Kyrie's injury history, Kevin Durant's recent re injury history, not even including the Achilles injury, but especially now including the Achilles injury when he's on the wrong side of 30, 
It would have been just like the Knicks, wouldn't it? To sit there and be able to get Kevin Durant, to get Kyrie Irving, and then one or both of those guys never truly lives up to the contract, and they're battling it out for the seventh or eighth spot in the East, and then you're like, what the hell did it matter? And then everybody would be crapping on the Knicks for that anyway. So it's almost like it's one of those instances where you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Now, what makes them look bad is a few hours after the news drops about Kyrie and KD going to the Nets, the Knicks are sitting there releasing a statement. It just makes you look bad. Not that your own failure to act, your own failure to seal the deal doesn't already make you look bad. It's stuff like that that makes you look weak. It's stuff like that that makes you look bad. But it, 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 again, from the standpoint of the Nets getting Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving and DeAndre Jordan, the Nets are going to be championship contenders next year because they won't have Kevin Durant. And then after that, who the hell knows how that's going to go? Because again, Kevin Durant's had some injury problems in recent years, and he's been in the league since 2007. And you look at Kyrie Irving, he's always one play away from another injury that's going to take him out for 15 to 20 games. And DeAndre Jordan is a diminishing, limited, defensive big man who doesn't really block a lot of shots and is an even more limited option offensively. Like, who's to say that that is ultimately going to bring a championship to Brooklyn? Like, if you look at this in the grand scheme of things, with some of the young role players and core players that the Nets have in place, and you slap in Durant, you slap in Kyrie, if they don't win a championship during that next three- to four-year stretch, then I hope everybody poons the fuck out of them and issues a little bit of an apology to the Knicks because ultimately it wouldn't have mattered if the Knicks had got him and they wouldn't have won a title either. And it's not like the Knicks have never went out there and made a big move or gotten somebody with big money. You look at um, Mari Stoudemire, look at the trade for Carmelo Anthony, but the bottom line is the shit didn't work. Now, you could sit there and say that you invested money and resources into the wrong players and not championship caliber guys, and that most certainly is a valid argument to put forward. But to sit there and say that they haven't tried or haven't done so at some point in time is ridiculous. In fact, for years, the problem used to be is the Knicks would spend way too many dollars on way too many crappy players and consistently would bury themselves into salary cap hell. So at least instead of massively, massively overpaying on long-term deals, once they struck out on KD and Kyrie, they put loaded up with a bunch of role players that are going to sit there and be there for one, and maybe in Julius Randle's case, two years. And then you try again. It's not the worst thing in the world. Sometimes big free agent moves work, and sometimes they don't. And you can sit there and say, well, they should have gotten KD and should have offered him the max. Well, whether they did or they didn't, if Kyrie and him were determined to play together and Kyrie didn't want to play for the Knicks, it doesn't fucking matter. And frankly, when you look at Kyrie, look at how it went with Boston last year. Do you really want that cancer in your locker room and in your organization? I'm just saying. And if you think his injury history all of a sudden is going to get any better as he gets older and now he's got paid even more money, you are insane. So you look at the Knicks now and you're like, what's next? Well, maybe you sit there and you take another stab at it a year from now and somebody like a Draymond Green hits the market. Or maybe you hold tight and stay patient for two years. And then you start looking at the Greek freak, Atatentacumpo, and some of these other guys that could potentially hit free agency. Who the hell knows? Maybe in another year or two, you have the cap space again where you could go out there and acquire somebody and make a big-time deal. But here's what I know for the Knicks. is not all hope is lost. you got Kevin Knox entering year number two. He could be a real player. Mitchell Robinson's entering year two. He definitely looks like a real-time player. Between Knox and Robinson... You've got to like that as a good start, especially because these guys still have a few years left on their rookie contracts. you got Dennis Smith Jr., who you acquired as part of the Porzingis deal, you know, probably a bench guy long term. He's still got two years left on his rookie deal. And then you look at the third overall pick, R.J. Barrett. There are elements of R.J. Barrett where I could see him developing into a James Harden type of player. So let's say... Let's say you do bring in Kevin Durant and you do bring in Kyrie Irving. Then it probably significantly minimizes the development of guys like Kevin Knox and or R.J. Barrett. And when you look at the way that that could have shaken out, would that have necessarily been the best thing for the organization, especially if there was no guarantee that you were going to win a championship with that core? I don't know. 
Maybe you're thinking it's optimistic spin and maybe it's crazy. Maybe it is. But I do think there is an element here of if Knox continues to develop, if Robinson continues to develop, and R.J. Barrett shows himself to be the type of player that I think he could be as an offensive two-guard in the NBA, the entire climate for this Knicks organization is going to change over the next year or two. It is going to change. And for all of those that want to sit there and say, hey, you get a new ownership and all of a sudden things are going to be different. You know, it took the Clippers five years after Steve Ballmer bought him to finally make a fucking difference. There's no guarantee if James Dolan sold the team tomorrow that you would get a better owner. There is no guarantee whatsoever. None. I can even talk about back in the day when Mark Cuban bought the fucking Mavericks. It took him over a damn decade before his organization won a championship. Hey, guarantee of shit. It's easy to say it. It's easy to believe it. And sometimes ownership changes make a difference. See the Chicago Blackhawks. Bill Fold Works died, so that way the Blackhawks could eventually thrive. But even that took time. And maybe that is the ultimate solution. And don't get me wrong. The quality of an organization starts at the top. It starts with the leadership. It starts with the ownership. And it all trickles down from there. That's just the way it is. And if your ownership sucks, your organization is going to suck. And that is the single biggest thing holding back the Knicks organization. But I want to emphasize again that this doesn't have to be disaster. If Knox and Barrett and Robinson can show themselves out and they can develop and R.J. Barrett shows himself to be an all-star type of player, yeah, I know it's a lot of ifs and if ifs and buts were candies and nuts and be Christmas every day, blah, 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 blah. But the bottom line is, is these types of things can happen, do happen, and if they do happen, you're going to be thinking a lot differently about the Knicks in another year or two where they've got some young stars that are very appealing for established guys to come in and want to play with in the biggest market in the country, in Madison Square Garden. And in a couple of years, we could be looking back at this and laughing at it and talking about how the Knicks have gotten one or two big names and now they are a championship contender. You could also play this back in two years from now and I could look like a complete and total moron. But hey, what the hell is the difference? When sometimes when everybody goes right, you go left. Everybody's crapping on the Knicks. And there is plenty to crap on. And frankly, they deserve it. But it doesn't mean that all hope is lost. Knicks fans, if you have any hope left, just hold on to it just a little bit longer. You might eventually get some reward for that faith.